Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. This is a quick little roundup for March this year. I haven't got quite as much to say in this video as in my previous one, um, because obviously last time I had a couple of big announcements to make about my job and my blog, and also I was covering two months at once. Um, so this time it's going to be relatively quick and easy. I haven't been to any theatre shows or exhibitions this month either, though I have got several theatre shows booked up in the coming months, which I'm really looking forward to. So the cultural side of things is going to be picking up as well um, now that I've settled into my new job and things are getting back to normal again, basically. Um, in terms of the job, that is still going well, though. Uh, my hours have just increased from 22 to 25 hours a week, which is lovely. Brings me an extra 50 quid in a week, roughly. So that's excellent. And Emily has also very kindly given me a box of chocolates to thank me for my work so far. Very, very kind of her. Um, so, yeah, that's going really nicely. And, yeah, apart from that, really, um, as I say, I haven't been out to any major shows or exhibitions this month, so it's going to be a very quick run-through of a few little things I've done while I've been out and about and a few things I've been watching that I've particularly enjoyed. So in terms of going out and about, I haven't got much to share in the way of pictures on this occasion, but just to run through a few things I have been doing very quickly. Um, at the beginning of the month, I went down to Torquay to see my ex-colleagues from my previous job, which was lovely. I hadn't seen them since May last year, because when we left at the end of the summer, there were a few people on holiday and stuff like that, and then at Christmas... And the train strikes and the weather put the kibosh on me trying to get down there for the Christmas dinner. So that was a shame. So it was lovely to finally get together with them again and have a catch up, have a game of bowling and have you know, a few drinks and a bite to eat. So that was really nice. And then I just spent a day in Torquay on a little wander around and just relaxing, having a nice relaxing weekend away by the seaside. So that was lovely. And I had some nice food to eat as well, of course. I mean, the Premier Inn breakfasts are always lovely. And I had a nice plate of fish and chips in the Weatherspoons pub in Torquay as well, which was nice. And then back in London, I met up with a group of people in Stratford one afternoon to look at the accessibility of different travel routes to the new Moorfields clinic that they've got on Broadway there. So there are a few other visually impaired people there like myself. There are representatives from Enabled Living, the local support service. There was a guy from Highways there who could talk to us about signage and markings on the road we might need. And then there were representatives from Moorfields itself, of course, who were very keen to see what we thought. So that was a good day, um, looking at the routes from the DLR station and the underground station and bus stops that people might use, things like that. So that was very productive. There were some good ideas put forward. It was a very nice discussion. So, yeah, it's great that they're going to be having a nice local clinic there because it'll be an ideal location for me and many other people. And then I also went for a few nice walks, of course, as I like to do around the city. I didn't take any pictures on this occasion because there either wasn't anything really picture worthy or I was just busy with whoever I was with at the time. But my favourite outing was with my aunt who took me to Camden Market because I hadn't looked around there before. It's quite overwhelming, a kind of place like that when you haven't been in there before when you can't see. Um, so, yeah, she took me around there and it was lovely. Lots of nice stalls in there and a lovely atmosphere. Um, so, yeah, I'd be more confident about going back there on my own now. I know kind of the layout and stuff like that. And then after we'd been in there, we walked down the road to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet place, which was really nice, very reasonably priced and a nice selection of food. And then we had a nice walk through Regent's Park before we came home. So, yeah, that was a lovely day out. And as I say, I've been for a few other nice walks as well. And we'll continue to do so as the, the weather hopefully improves. It's been a bit unsettled lately, but hopefully the weather will get nicer now we're getting into the spring. So moving on to TV shows then, and there are a few programmes I want to mention in particular this month. Obviously, I've been watching my regular comedies as well, like The Last Leg, QI, Would I Lie to You, Alan Davis as you Untitled, and there's a new series of Taskmaster. So I don't need to talk about any of that stuff. I'm just going to talk about a few other things that have particularly caught my attention. The first of which is Wild Isles. This is a new BBC series hosted by David Attenborough. So you automatically know that it's going to be brilliant because nature shows and David Attenborough are a brilliant combination and they always come out excellently on the BBC. So, yeah, it's a really lovely look at nature in the British Isles, which is why my mother and I decided to watch it. You know, we don't watch nature shows very often. There's nothing wrong with them, but we just don't need to see all of them. We've only had so much time to watch different things. So we just focused on shows that grab our attention in particular for one reason or another. And this one did because it's about our home turf. So, yeah, it's been a really lovely series. Lots of fascinating facts and insights since, you know, how different animals behave in terms of mating and hunting and defending themselves against predators and all this kind of thing. So it's really cool. There's lots of great stuff in there, such as the wood wide web, as they call it, where trees and fungi connect and communicate in an incredible way that, you know, I'd never known about before. And in terms of like insects, there's a caterpillar that tricks ants into thinking it's their queen. And so it takes it back into their nest and it feeds off their larvae and stuff like that. It's, it's amazing what kind of nature has come up with. We as humans invent all sorts of technology and things, but 
nature is always just incredible and weird in the stuff it does. So, yeah, this series is really brilliantly filmed, as always. And, yeah, I definitely encourage you to give it a watch. It's fantastic. And obviously there's much more detail in my blog post, just as there is for everything else I mentioned in this video. So do go and check that out if you want to find out more. And then sticking with excellent BBC shows, I finally got around to watching all of the episodes of Luther, which my best mate Simon recommended to me. And this is a fantastic cop drama, a thriller, with some very dark and disturbing cases in it that have to be solved. But John Luther is a very clever detective and he works hard with his team to solve these crimes and to catch the people responsible. And he has a very stubborn determination to catch the people who are responsible for these things, even if that means bending or breaking the law. And he puts his career increasingly at risk throughout the series. And he's also emotional in some ways as well and has a bit of a short temper. So he's a very well-rounded and interesting character. And seeing his progression throughout the series is quite interesting, especially as he gets hooked up with a murderer he couldn't convict called Alice Morgan. And she's a very formidable and intelligent lady as well. So he doesn't want to kind of form this bond with her, but he does. It's not a romantic bond. It's just this very complicated kind of relationship they have as it were. She keeps popping up in his life. She's obsessed with him. So yeah, it's quite fascinating to see how the two of them interact, how that develops over the episodes. So yeah, it's really good fun to watch. There's lots of tension and twists and stuff like that in there that you'd expect from a drama of this nature. And I have now bought the Blu-ray box set of it because it is the sort of show that I'd watch over again because it is very, very good. I'll mention that in the blog post along with the film that's just come out on Netflix, which is why I'm watching Luther now because they've just released a sequel to the series on Netflix as a film. So I'm looking forward to watching that very, very shortly. So I'll write about the Blu-ray box set and the film in the blog post that's going with this video just so you can see what I thought of those. And then over on Channel 4's On Demand Service, all four, I've watched a series called The Undeclared War that my friend Simon also recommended to me. And this again is quite fascinating and thrilling and again quite disturbing in some ways because it feels very real and very possible what's happening in there. And it's basically set next year when the general election's about to happen and Russia have launched a big cyber attack on the UK and GCHQ are trying to dig through the code of this complicated malware to figure out what it's doing. And there's this work experience girl called Sarah who's working with them and she's helping to dig through the code and she manages to kind of think outside the box of it and find things that the experts haven't found and it kind of rubs some people up the wrong way and stuff but how it's visualized the way that she's doing that is very good because it's not just scrolling through text it's kind of showing her going through buildings and corridors and landscapes and things and really representing this kind of needle in a haystack search that she's on in a very kind of visually interesting and engaging way which is nice and the other element is that Russia are also manipulating people using social media media you know the way they post on there and through their news coverage as well so it's really kind of disturbing but not surprising to see how easy it is for them to do that and it's worth watching the series just for that aspect in a way it's a bit of an eye-opener just to show you how easily you know social media can be used for bad means so yeah it's a very interesting series it's well worth a watch even if it kind of just unnerves you a little bit which is kind of designed to do really and on a lighter note we had comic relief of course which is a very worthwhile cause it's well worth donating to that but the telethon hasn't been very good for some years now and this year was no exception really one or two nice things on there but Lenny Henry couldn't be there so that kind of took some of the magic away for a start David Tennant did a very good job in his shoes but even so without Lenny there it does lose some of the magic and we had Tony Robinson coming back as Baldrick which was kind of an exciting prospect but it was a bit boring in the end really he was just kind of sitting there reading a mildly amusing bedtime story but without Blackadder there it's just not the same really so that didn't really get into that particularly it was nice to see French and Saunders taking part in a spoof of the Traitors though I've never seen the actual Traitors series I know what it's about out, but I'm not interested in watching it but yeah it was nice to see French and Saunders doing a little sketch together there and in terms of music I enjoyed seeing a performance from Mrs Doubtfire the musical which is something I must go and try and see at some point and there was a song by Flo and Joan about the last 35 years of Comic Relief because it was a big anniversary for them that song was alright there was some nice digs at the broadcasting of it over the years there but I think the most interesting thing for me was a programme looking back at Celebrity Big Brother and this was the first time that there had really been a celebrity reality TV show it kind of paved the way for everything that's followed since like I'm a celebrity and all this kind of stuff. The very first series of Big Brother I did watch because it was a novelty at the time. I'd never watched any series after that because I just wasn't interested. And likewise, you know, the first celebrity Big Brother again was just very intriguing to see what would happen to the celebrities in there. And yeah, having them look back at it, you know, Jack D, who famously escaped from the compound, and Vanessa Phelps, Anthea Turner, and a few of the others who were involved, hearing the honesty about, you know, what they were going through in their lives and the media at the time and how it affected them and just what it was like to be in that environment is something so new and unknown. Yeah, it's just quite interesting and fun to look back at some of the clips as well but yeah I haven't been interested in any reality shows or celebrity reality shows since then but it was just it was such a novelty and such a launch pad for everything that came after it that in that sense it is quite interesting to watch so yeah it wasn't a particularly exciting evening of television but there were one or two things in there that I thought were worth mentioning and I need to pad out this video a bit as it's going to be quite short anyway so yeah I do you know support the charity and it's great that they raised over 34 million by the end of the night and then finally I really enjoyed watching the big 
United Musicals by the National Lottery, hosted by comedian Jason Manford. And as the name suggests, this was a show full of performances from lots of different musicals, from West End productions to touring productions. And I really enjoyed watching performances from lots of different shows, including We All Rock You, The King and I, Les Mis, Shrek, The Bodyguard, Wicked, Matilda, Ain't Too Proud, Mamma Mia. And Jason performed a song from The Greatest Showman with the Children's Choir. And Michael Ball performed a song from Aspects of Love. So there was a great variety in there. I'm not going to mention every single show, but those are my particular favourites. And I have booked audio described performances for several musicals later in the year, including one that I've mentioned on that list. And there might be one or two others. We'll see how I get on. But certainly one on that list I'm going to see this year. So I'll let you guess which one that might be. And there are some others that aren't on that list that I'm going to see. And that's it. That's all I have to mention this month. As I said at the start, it was only going to be a very short video because there wasn't quite so much to mention compared to the last one. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and found things of interest in there as usual. And as I say, I've got various things booked up for the future. And now that things have settled down, I've got back to normal. I've settled into my new job. I've done a load of stuff on my blog that I want to do. So I can kind of just move forward with more freedom and just go out more, see more stuff, you know, and tell you more about the stuff that I get up to. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the year holds. Um, it's certainly started off very well so far. So yeah, just very short and sweet. I'm sorry if you were hoping for more than that, but there's definitely going to be more to mention in the next video. So yeah, until then, I hope you have fun as well. I hope you have a lovely Easter too. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I will see you for another video very soon. Bye for now.